Welcome back to Open, everyone. So this year, the uh, Caborca Theater Company is celebrating its 10th anniversary with Octopus Garden, the uh, first English language translation of our Tinian playwright Aristides Vargas. And the play follows the story of a man that seeks to recover his memory from a mad woman, but encounters the ghost of his ancestors inviting him to dream again. And joining us to tell us more about the play, we welcome Caborca Artistic Director Javier Antonio Gonzalez and Caborca Producing Director and Octopus Garden actor David Skeist. Hello and welcome. Hello, Marina. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Did I get it all right? In this? It is all Every correct. Bit of yes. it. The <laughs> Octopus Garden. Yeah. I love how they reference the mad woman yeah. who is actually La Bruja, <laughs> right? Well, she is and she isn't. She, she is and she isn't, right? Because I, for some reason, Brujas are always referred to as being mad women. Yeah. Right, but before we even go into that, I just had to point that out because I'm like the mad woman of, of all the ways to describe the witch. But it's okay, we, we could talk further about it. But let's talk about the play itself and the importance of its translation mm -hmm. to English. Aristides Vargas uh, writes this play uh, and premieres it in 1992 with his group uh, Malayerba. It was a beautiful theater company from Ecuador. Uh, formed by a bunch of people who were actual exiles who came together all fleeing uh, atrocious uh, political regimes. Mm -hmm. And so the play really explores uh, political trauma or like trauma after uh, state violence. So we meet a man, Jose, who has lost his memory after uh, some events have taken place in his life around him due to state violence. And then it is through the town madwoman, you know, somebody that uh, in the town is known to be what, yeah, to be different. <laughs> yeah. And so it deals between ins ins um, amnesia and insanity. Uh -huh. You know, it, both of the, these characters are, that, that is basically how they are defined between those, you know, those two places. And mm -hmm. they come together at the seashore to try to bring back his memory. Uh, his memory, yeah, through and storytelling. It, it, and yeah. in that process, he has, he's visited by ancestors yeah right which would one would allude to him being crazy right exactly yeah. having conversations with people who aren't there yeah well I, mean, I haven't even seen the play but <laughs> I'm, like, I'm getting the the visuals you know yeah it is a dream play or like a journey you know into the subconscious they mostly himself but in our staging actually it's a group of people who kind of go down this rabbit hole into the memory tra trying to unearth what happened it sounds yeah. lovely. It sounds lovely. So I want David to talk a little bit about Caborca mm. and um, the, I guess, the 10th anniversary and why you yeah. chose this play to celebrate your 10th anniversary. Yeah, sure. I mean, I know you're one of the actors as well, yeah. but he gave us a nice visual, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let's go down that ride, but let's talk a little bit about Caborca. Well, so we founded Caborca in 2009 uh, around, really around Javier's vision as a director and as a playwright. And we're a bilingual experimental theater company, so we occupy this kind of very particular intersection of Latinx theater and uh, experimental theater, um, multimedia, multi-layered theater, uh, really sort of guided by the both authorial and directorial vision of, of Javier. And over the 10 years, we've produced a bunch of original plays, a number of adaptations, some classical plays, both from the uh, Hispanic as well as the English language canon. Um, and why Octopus's Garden in particular, I, I think there's a couple of reasons. One, Aristides Vargas and Malayerba uh, loom very large in the history of Caborica. Javier studied with them, a number of our members studied with them in Ecuador when they were uh, still in college at, in Puerto Rico. But then also thematically, Octopus's Garden is a, um, He's, you know, Vargas is really exploring the kind of the, the, the rupture of authoritarian violence, the, the, um, uh, the disconnection between the present and the past, you know, what happens in the aftermath of these regimes, whether it's in Argentina or in Chile or uh, any number of, of these sort of right-wing authoritarian, authoritarian uh, generally U.S.-backed regimes throughout Latin America. So our last uh, major play was an adaptation of a novel by Roberto Bolaño called Distant Star that looked at a similar topic in Chile. And, you know, looking at, looking at where we are politically <laughs> right now, the rise of authoritarianism globally and the rise of seemingly authoritarianism here, um, this kind of history of that sort of violence throughout the continent feels like one of the most important things that this intersectional Latinx experimental theater company could be looking at. No, it's lovely and well put, right? Because it's relatable, unfortunately, to what we're going on 
what's going on here in the United States. Who Absolutely. would have thought, right? Uh, you know, I do want to just acknowledge you for honoring your peers. That's a lovely gesture. For honoring my peers? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a lovely gesture. It really is, right? Because here's the other thing. Um, what you guys are doing is is more of what I would consider right, being an urban Latina, more mm. of South American, right? And so, but we're all Latinos, and so if we don't really support each other and learn about each other, then how do we come together? And so our history matters, and so it's important to share these stories in these artistic ways, but yet know that our stories are documented. Well, there's such a particular legacy of political ensemble theater that comes out of Latin America. And Mala Yerba is one of the great examples of that. And so we, you know, we are a company that is largely Puerto Rican, based in New York, but also rooted in this kind of Pan-American ensemble political tradition. And so it, I think bringing that tradition to a New York context and a Puerto Rican context uh, and an intersectional context feels, it just feels very particular and very relevant. I just love how the artistic director is giving you the nod <laughs> of, of approval the whole time. He's like, yes. Just as we planned Yes, it. Yeah. yes. He's like, exactly, exactly. Well put, well put, well put. Thank you. <laughs> no, and it's also, you know, the, the, thank you for saying that because the, it speaks to the act of translation, no? We have been wanting to uh, bring, we have wanted to bring Arisida's work to the States for a while. But it's not until there's actually a tangible translation, in this case, a beautiful, basically a poem by Aurora Lauzardo, who, I mean, it's, she just really was able mm -hmm. to recontextualize the play, not change its content, but really just change its language. And, and it, it's really the guiding force here is also her poetry. And we should add, when talking about our collaborators, we also have, uh, we have infused our interpretation of the play with original music by Puerto Rican composer and ethnomusicologist P.G. Aponte, um, who has worked with Aristides and has worked with yeah. uh, his company before. And so w this is also part of the continuity and the act of translation that we're working with. Yeah, as well. the process of bringing it here also involves a lot of people, you know, and it really is about bridging. Yeah, there's people from Puerto Rico reconnecting with the author himself, and then all of us here reinterpreting the piece. Yeah. All right, so what do you hope, uh, what kind of impact that you hope this leaves on the audience? Um, and, and, and from the sound of it, it sounds re very reflective, the, the piece itself. Yeah. yeah, well, it referenced, you know, the title is from uh, the Beatles song, Octopus's Garden, so it really has a kind of joyful, also youthful, you know, um, playful, playful, yes, yeah, I can tell just by... to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know, a group of people once went to the beach and then things happened, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a little bit along those lines, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's almost like looking back and looking at atrocities, uh, political atrocities, but looking at them almost with, um, from the point of view of the young, yeah. I wouldn't say optimistic, but I would say, you know, with hope. Right, almost. with hope, yeah, yeah which yeah. we need. <laughs> yeah, which we need, <laughs> which yeah. We need. <laughs> the, the play really takes this kind of expansive lens on, on trauma, on collective trauma, on individual trauma, on emotional, psychic, uh, psychological, and physical trauma, and I think trauma looms, yeah, it, 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 it surrounds us right now in, in the present day world. It surrounds us virtually on social media, it surrounds us in the news, it surrounds us in our own daily lives, and, and so taking a kind of internationalist look at, you know, what is, what is trauma, what are the ramifications, what are the shadows of trauma, and how do we, you know, how do we take a kind of poetic way through that? Right, to heal, healing. to yes, heal exactly. together. And, uh, and that goes for the audience as well. Absolutely. And I got it. I got the whole thing. And I, I want to thank you guys for coming up here and, and sharing it with our audience, um, with our viewers. And so are there any last words you would like to share? Well, we will be at Target Margin mm -hmm. uh, starting from July 12th next week, July 12th to July 21st. Yes. Yeah. And we also, actually, we're also having a symposium at the Luis Aida Center on the uh, the Monday. So that's what the... July 15th. July 15th. We're having a symposium with Aristides Vargas, with uh, Charo, his wife, who's his lead actress, with uh, Rosa Luisa Marquez, who's a Puerto Rican director who's interpreted his work, and with Javier, and with uh, Aurora, the translator. That'll be at the Luis Aida Center. So there's a sort of cross-disciplinary uh, event that's happening in conjunction with the play itself. That's lovely, because I always say to everyone that comes on it, on set is, mm -hmm. we have a mental health crisis, and all of this loans to that healing process. 
So thank you. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you so much for having us. Thank yes. you, Rena. All right, you guys, once again, Octopus's Garden is uh, will preview on July 12th and run July 13th at 8 p.m., July 14th at 5 p.m., July 18th through the 19th at 8 p.m., and July 20th at 7, and then July 21st at 2 p.m. Okay. at Target Margins Theater. And again, that's plenty of time for you guys to go see this. It's located at 232 52nd Street in Sunset Park. Brooklyn and for tickets go to octopusgarden.brownpapertickets.com. All right, we're taking a quick break, but when we return, we'll learn about the benefits behind a great massage. Don't go anywhere.